Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at the coefficient of restitution in the case of a one-dimensional elastic collision between two particles. And we're going to show that in this case the value of the coefficient of restitution is exactly 1. So just to set things up, I've got a diagram of the situation we're looking at up at the top left here. And so before the collision we've got our two particles. I'm going to say they have masses m1 and m2 and they are going with some initial velocities which I'm going to call u1 and u2 respectively. Now notice that I've drawn the u1 arrow as being bigger than the u2 arrow simply because this um, ensures that the particles are actually going to collide, right? So the, there is some relative motion between the particles such that the one on the left, particle one, is going to come in and hit the one on the right. Okay, now after the collision, um, the, we're going to assume the mass of the particles don't change but the velocities can change, um, and I'm going to call the new velocities v1 and v2, just following kind of conventional notation there. Um, notice that this time I've drawn the v2 arrow as being bigger than the v1 arrow, because we know the particle on the right must be going faster than the particle on the left if they're moving in the same direction after the collision, because otherwise um, that would imply that particle 1 had moved straight through particle 2 without actually colliding. Okay. Now, in terms of how the coefficient of restitution is actually defined in terms of these quantities, um, well, we usually write it as e, and this coefficient of restitution is defined as the speed of restitution over the speed of approach. In other words, the relative speed after the collision divided by the relative speed before the collision. Now, taking into account what I've just said about the relative sizes of v1 and v2 and u1 and u2, um, the top and bottom of the fraction that defines the coefficient of restitution should both be positive, right? Because it's the relative speeds, and speeds are positive by definition. Now, if I want to keep the um, the speed or the relative speed after the collision as a positive quantity, I have to do the bigger speed minus the smaller speed, which, as we discussed earlier, is going to have to be v2 minus v1. Now, what's going to have to happen is that ones and twos will be flipped around on the bottom of the fraction, because as we said earlier, u1 is going to be bigger than u2 if there is a collision um, that's actually uh, going to take place. And so I have to put u1 minus u2 on the bottom there. Okay, so there we go. That's going to be our definition of the coefficient of restitution. Now let's see if we can actually find, um, well, the value that it's equal to. Now the way we're going to do this is just by doing conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, as we often do in collision problems. Let's start off with conservation of momentum. Okay, so um, the total momentum initially is going to be, well, we get m1 u1 from the first particle and then m2 u2 from the second particle. So we just add those together. And the final momentum after the collision is going to be the same, but with v's instead of u's, right? So m1 v1 plus m2 v2. So there we go. We're just saying the momentum before equals the momentum afterwards. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of collect uh, the sim not like terms but similar terms together. In other words, there is a term with an m1 in it on the left hand side, but there's a, a term with an m1 in it on the right hand side as well. And similarly for the m2. So um, if we put the m1 terms and the m2 terms on their own sides and factorize, we're going to end up with the following m1 uh, and then into u1 minus v1 is going to be equal to m2 into v2 minus u2. Okay, so there we go. That's how I kind of rearranged conservation of momentum equation. And I'm going to label that as equation one, because we're going to get a second equation from conservation of energy. So remembering that this is the elastic collision case, let's think about, well, writing an equivalent statement for the, for the energies of the particles. So um, if there's no kind of particle-particle interaction at a distance, uh, there's going to be no potential energy. And so we just have to think about kinetic energy, right? So our statement of conservation of energy is just going to be, well, half m1 u1 squared. That's the initial kinetic energy of particle 1. Then we've got to add on the initial kinetic energy of particle 2, half m2 u2 squared. And then we're going to get a very similar thing on the right-hand side. Uh, which is the final kinetic energy, except we've just got v's uh, instead of u's now. So half m1 v1 squared plus half 
m2 v2 squared. Now, if we again think about manipulating this equation in a similar way that we did with the momentum equation, um, well, first thing we can do to simplify this is just cancel all of the halves there because that's a common factor to all of the terms. Um, if we put the m1 terms on the left and the m2 terms on the right, we get the following equation m1 and then u1 squared minus v1 squared. Uh, and the m2 uh, terms on the right hand side are going to give us an m2 uh, and then brackets v2 squared minus u2 squared. Now, there we go, I'm going to call this equation 2 our rearranged uh, energy conservation equation. Now, what we can do with this, um, notice these two equations have pretty similar forms, and we can actually make the masses completely cancel out by dividing one equation by the other. So if I take equation 2 and divide it by equation 1, what's going to happen is the m1s will cancel on the left, right, and we'll get u1 squared minus v1 squared over u1 minus v1. And similarly, on the right-hand side, the m2s will cancel, and you'll get v2 squared minus u2 squared over v2 minus u2. Now, conveniently, the numerators of both of these fractions are of the form of a difference of two squares, right? Um, in other words, we've got this uh, standard identity uh, that if you've got two quantities, x and y, if you do um, x squared minus y squared, you can factorize that as x plus y and then x minus y. So if we do that, factorize the numerator of the left-hand side, notice that we get u1 minus v1 times u1 plus v1, but then the u1 minus v1 would cancel with the bottom, and so we're just left with u1 plus v1, right? So when we do that division after factorizing according to difference of two squares, we just get a u1 plus v1 on the left-hand side, and similarly, on the right-hand side, if we factorize the numerator, we get v2 minus u2 times v2 plus u2, then the, uh, the minus factor would cancel with the denominator, and you just get v2 plus u2. Um, and there we go, that simplified quite a lot. Then, if we put the u terms on the same side together and the v terms on the other side together, we'll just end up with u1 minus u2 equals v2 minus v1, okay? And this looks very kind of similar to this de definition of our coefficient of restitution that we had initially. All we have to do is divide by um, u1 minus u2, and then the right-hand side of this will actually be exactly the same as what we defined this coefficient to be, right? And so we can say the coefficient of restitution, which was defined to be v2 minus v1 over u1 minus u2 um, is going to be exactly 1, right? Because the numerator and the denominator are exactly equal to each other if, as we've assumed, it's an elastic collision. So there you go, E equals 1 for an elastic collision. In my next video, I'm going to generalize this result and see how we can interpret um, the coefficient of restitution for inelastic collisions.